Hi there. A lot of people have asked me to show you a bit more about the Bobcat, the Pulse Jet Powered Bobcat that you've seen on my YouTube channel. And this is it. This is uh, some close up views. Um, I've added a nice PJHC sticker. Um, but effectively, this is the engine end. As you can see, this is the pressure tap that pressurizes the fuel system. Um, I'll take the canopy off in a minute and show you inside, but we'll go around the back end. I rebuilt the tailplane so I could mount a low profile servo inside the tailplane so that that's basically not using these horrible long push rods that would give you flutter. Uh, look at the tail end there. You'll notice up the front here, I'll just zoom in, there's an, there's an air gap there between the engine and a heat shield. Now that air gap basically stops the engine radiating heat and setting the model on fire. And we can come around and I'll show you a bit more about that, that heat shield. It's just aluminium and it runs from there to there so that when the combustion chamber gets hot the heat is uh, shielded from the combustible parts of the model. Um, now you can see inside the intake tubes here my ducts. If we might even be able to get a... no, I'll just take the canopy off to see that. But um, on this side we've got um, a fuel filler and this is the spark plug on the motor here. Obviously uh, for starting we just hook that up to the high tension get some spark and away it goes. The rudder setup is pretty Standard for a Bobcat 52, just some servos driving each rudder individually. I used the um, same tailplane mounting system. And what I have got here is some aluminium tape. Uh, this protects the tailplane from heat because obviously this pipe on the engine gets pretty warm and it radiates a lot of heat. So when you sit on the ground, this tape under here, all this aluminium tape just reflects the heat away so that the, the tail doesn't get too hot and uh, start burning. Right. Uh, you can see inside the engine, not a lot to see inside a positive engine, it's basically just the, the valve retainer at the back there and the inside tube. I'll take the canopy off now and show you what goes on inside the whole thing. Inside the main thing you notice is that there are, there are two fuel tanks here. There's one at the top, you can see there, and right down the bottom in there there's another one. The bottom one is a 20 ounce tank, this is a 6 ounce tank. It gives us plenty of fuel. Why do I use two tanks? Well, two reasons. First of all, the fuselage isn't big enough to use one large tank and secondly this acts as a header tank so any bubbles um, that might come up from the main tank sit in the second tank and we don't get bubbles going into the pulse jet because it only takes one bubble to stop the engine. Now here we've got the fuel shuttle valve that basically enables me to turn the engine off and on by, just, by basically turning off the fuel flow with this pipe here which goes off to the engine shuts that off. Um, driven by a servo on the throttle channel. Um, up here just we've got the, the uh, nose leg servo receiver, switch down the bottom, uh, this is running on 72 megs at the moment so there's the area which runs up there up to a whip on the back, somewhere around here here's the whip, made it myself um, you can see in here, if we look in there, we might be able to get a glimpse of the intake of the motor there you go, you can see the intake there and there's the spray bar poking out and if we look back we can see that there's the intake to the engine and might get another look through the through the duct there, there you go. Here's the pulse jet intake. So you can see it has a now it has a fairly good path of airflow to the engine. It was a problem before, but I put in some extra ducting and hopefully that'll provide enough airflow. You can see some of that ducting just in here. It's a bit hidden on that side. Go around the other side. There's the ducting there. You can see I've added some some plywood in here just to duct the airflow back towards the motor in the back there. Okay, so that, that's pretty much it. There's not a lot else to see. Um, those are my scoops because the NACA ducts didn't work well enough so this directs the air into there. Um, that's the plane itself. Uh, I'll be flying it again shortly when the wind settles down because it's blowing a gale outside now. So we can uh, see how well it flies. I made a few changes to the motor. We're actually running a bit more power on the motor now because I've gone to a dual valve setup means I can, I can extract more power from the motor without sacrificing valve life. So, until next time, stay tuned and watch for the next Pulse Jet 8 Bobcat 50 video.